we'll be following more of that um, lower bracket now because we're going to hop on over to Navi versus Empire. Uh, round one lower bracket action, and then following that, the winner of that will go up against Odium. So the other part of the lower bracket, we won't see TFT up against Spirit until, I believe, the day after. So uh, we'll take a bit of a break, and we'll come back with Navi versus Empire. <laughs> Which has apparently started, guys. Uh, we're gonna. Le I'll leave the draft up. We're gonna take. I need to refill my water cup. So we'll be back in like two minutes, guys, and start talking about this draft. But we'll leave it up for you for now. We're not even in this lobby. Not a big deal. We're casting from their feet, anyways. But uh, we'll be right back. Enjoy the draft. We'll be quiet for now. Uh, see you guys soon. All right, everybody. We're back already. I said we wouldn't be too long. We are here with our next BO3. We're an hour behind schedule, even though I think we mostly started on time. I think we started early, even. Yeah, we started early. That was just a long BO3. It didn't feel like that took... <laughs> I saw the time, and I was like, oh, it's 9 o'clock. That was just three hours for a BO3, but no, we... that was four hours. Game three 2 games. and Game 3 stretched on a really long time, right? Yeah, I mean, but we saw a lot of refresher shards and whatnot, so there was at least, yeah, I think 260 plus minute games, then, you know, 10 minute breaks between games. Drafts take 15 minutes sometimes, maybe. It, it adds up quickly, you know. You schedule three hours for a BO3 because typically they do last less than three hours, two O's easily, and even a 2 1 will often go three hours, but no, not the case here. Uh, and Navi Empire, what. Before we get into the draft, well, how have these teams looked? I mean, they're both in the lower brackets, so obviously um, had losses. Okay, so Navi has looked uh, better than they looked in the qualifiers. Um, I will give them that. Um, maybe that is in part um, because they... Who did they play? I, sorry, I forgot already. Was Team Spirit or something? Um, uh, I can look. Yeah, I got it here. Got oh, they played. Uh, they played Fursi and forced them to a game three, and okay. it was it was relatively close. So maybe that's part of the reason. Then I think that they look better um, than they did before. It's because obviously you... I valued Fursi pretty highly. Yeah, and, and Navi, Navi did win the minor qualifier where Navi they had to be yep. pretty tough competition. You know, Win strike, Espada, all those basically everyone except for Fursi and VP. So mm -hmm. all those consistently good Spirit um, CIS teams were in that. In the games that they lost, though, um, well, 
you know, I always hate calling out um, a player ba- like on a loss, but the player who really stood out in my head was um, Magical. And the reason I mostly feel bad about that is because he's already has a lot of people giving him shit because he replaced Endy. So no matter what, you are pretty much always going to have somebody hate you. Even if you're like the best player in the world, there's probably somebody out there who hates you for replacing Dendy. So, um, yes. but to be honest, his, his performance did not look um, very good in their losses. Um, I felt like he could have done a lot more with the, um, so one of them, he played a Quaswex invoker and he moved around a lot, but his rotations were not successful. And I don't know if it's, because, like, he just didn't have a, a as good of a read on the game as someone like Thompson had on his Quaswex Invoker, but he from there just fall uh, fell off pretty quickly. Okay, like he actually did not uh, because you don't go Hanamitis on that build and stuff. He actually became relatively under leveled, and then from there, like the rest of the team just couldn't really do enough. Um, Blizzy. Or sorry, not Blizzy. Uh, Chu and Crystallize, I believe, uh, for me personally, are the rocks on this team. Uh, I think they both perform really well. Chu looks like uh, a great up-and-coming support. Not sure where he came from, but he looks great. And Crystallize is honestly the person that I think Navi... If I'm going to hold on to any player, as I reshuffle and shuffle and shuffle, I'm going to hold on to Crystallize. Yeah, I imagine Navi looked at their past year where they had their, up, their ups, their downs. They had some moments where it looked like promising with a new roster like okay where, where do we start yeah. do we keep anyone if so who's the most important and yeah I would, I would definitely agree on crystallize there empire looks like just a you know a young cis team got put together um and they do have some promising talent already say is new uh i believe he's kind of new to competitive dota uh this is his first uh as purge put it this is his first roster our first he's the first time he's on a team with a wiki page <laughs> right so that yeah, kind yeah. Of say, yeah sure he was on other teams but i'd never heard of him he'd never heard of him yeah um when you're playing he is a sick win ranger support okay he's sick at it so uh i anticipate uh good things from him in this game great well we uh into our first game it's a drow strat from navi drow storm with the Nature's Prophet will be a support Nature's Prophet, but still benefiting from that Drought War early on. Axe going to be their core initiator. And then on the Empire side, Mag Troll. This is a classic combo, something Navi themselves used to run all the time back when Dendi was on the team playing the Magnus. And uh, a Pugna for Chappie playing mid lane. So we'll see how this one fares. How do you, how do you think they do, how their lineup matches up against a, a Drow Strat? Was, Drow was picked up very early in the first two of the draft. Uh, it is nice in the fact that they will probably, like, they'll accelerate very quickly if Navi doesn't succeed in being able to limit map control. Um, but my, I guess my problem with Empire's lineup is I struggle to see, like, they don't have enough team fight, I think, to challenge a Drow Ranger strategy for towers. And so you may have this Troll Magnus combo that farms very quickly, but you won't have the map control, you won't own enough creep cams for him to take advantage of that. Or at least that's what I expect. Maybe yeah. the landing phase will go Empire's way significantly enough that um, they'll be able to snowball that advantage a bit. But, you know, just look at their heroes. They they don't have any big team fighter outside of like vaguely Pugna Magnus. But, you know, you're not really RPing into a really good magic dam damage combo or something like that, you know? Yeah. And it seems like a lot of that could depend on, you know, who, like if if you go off to good early start, you take those early towers, suddenly you're able to access the enemy jungle and just farm a lot better because of that. So yeah. that's something Pugna can definitely do if, you know, he makes some good rotations. But at the same time, saying Nami can do. They've got Nature's Prophet, they've got a Storm who can roam around with Drow Aura, so they can also dive and take like an early tier one mid or top, much like Empire can try and do with their mid tier one and their, the bottom tier one of Navi. Empire does seem uh, very one dimensional. Um, in the regard that they have done this, this is the third time they've done this in this tournament, and they've only the played. This is their fourth game. Mag troll, you mean, or mag troll, part? or they did mag animage. That was the game okay. they actually won against Final Tribe. Um, to be honest, I think Final Tribe should have won that game, but they made a few mistakes. 
So Empire definitely has a specific kind. So if you just swap out, uh, I think, Pugna for Venomancer, and you swap out Ogre for Undying, this is their their lineup for yep. Game 3 against uh, Final Try. And those heroes are swapping out are kind of similar in what they do, like the Ogre for the Undying. I'm like, okay, you know, similar yeah. lane. Just let, secure your, your lane so that you can have these greedy late game team fight heroes like the the mag plus whatever um, which is just made possible when you have an ogre on, or undying in the lineup yeah and and, you, and i would look at this lineup and i would almost expect it to be swapped because crystallized the kind of person that i would put that much effort into trying to make sure he has a good game and he's in a great carry position um but it feels like empire feels the same way about kuman and i would agree i think from kuman's performance so far it's been pretty good um, so him and, and Seiyu, Moposhka did a lot of work uh, from the offlane position as well. Um, that may have just been too many opportunities that Final Tribe gave to him on the Magnus, but he had some very good RPs, and I think he had a really good Axe game, even though they lost. Well, as it stands, the uh, Ogre pick and the Wind Ranger are securing these lanes incredibly well. A uh, bit of a signif pretty significant Dire CS advance so far. Windrain's going to find an early kill. First Blood Bottom does pay for it with her life as Nature's Prophet TP's in as well, but Mposhka has ways to chew his way out of the tree sprout, so this leaves Axe alone up top and does secure them a First Blood in this lane. And this is part of the reason it's not just the mag uh, plus the core combination that Empire's looking at here. They, I think Empire's almost always willing to Magnus Windranger as an opening because it is a guaranteed, like it's almost guaranteed that they're going to win their offlane. Yeah. Because being able to put in power on the Wind Ranger, who has arguably one of the best animations from a support, like great, great range, decent damage, great animation, like you really abuse that in lane. Yeah. So we saw quite a few Magnuses um, in the Europe qualifier for Dream League, and it was always this two-one-zero build. Like it seems like people just don't care about secure anymore. They're just like, let's get in power early on. Yeah. Empower my lane partner, shockwave to farm. Like, let's just secure this lane. We don't care about skewering people in the towers or any of this fancy stuff. Yeah, how many supports could challenge uh, a core in a right click battle? You know, that's just usually not the case, but the Wind Ranger is able to do it to the Draw Ranger because he has better damage and he has Wind Run. So, as soon as the Draw Ranger turns around to try and push damage back, he Wind Runs, gets a couple more shots, and backs out scot free. Drow just 13 last hits so far in this lane. That is the struggles of versing this dual lane with the Empower. Elsewhere, Storm doing well mid, but Axe is also not having the best time up top. He's pretty even on CS with the Troll, but it hasn't been perhaps the dominant lane they were hoping it to be. Ogre, doing what Ogres do best. Just constant ignite harassment if possible. The Troll's nice against the Axe just because he can play range form uh, for the game, but Later on, this axe is like a he's a great anti-carry. And in that regard, he's always good against these heroes you try and funnel a lot of farm into. Looks like Sinego's gonna die here as Kuman should be able to finish him off with the range axe form. And go right back to CSing. Hold on, we, we got a red line on stream. I gotta fix this. Oh, beautiful viewers, I apologize. <laughs> There's just a red line. It was out like of a nowhere. random red squiggle on the stream. <laughs> Somebody had uh, been whiteboarding on X I don't know. Huh. Well, sure. We fixed it, guys. Oh, sure. that's right. Rob would occasionally circle the monkeys whenever they would cut to the monkey show. Oh. Uh, maybe I accidentally clicked on that. Clicked on there or something. So. Yeah, it could be. All right. we're, we're all good, guys. Just calm down. Calm down. I, I calm down. I mean, I apologize. Crystallized eyes again. Yeah. I saw Look it when the camera was on. So I thought it was just something on the camera shot, and I was like, okay, that's fine. I can ignore that. But it turns out it was in game as well. Um. Crystallized too is down here, so he's having a rough time down bottom. Yeah, yes. they they actually just the creep wave was kind of close to their tower on the side of Empire, and they still just like dove all the way into the tower. Main's gonna be slowed down here. Looks like Blizzy with a battle hunger Sh might be able to run him down. Main's gonna get back to the tower. Blizzy gets one more shot in, but it's still not enough. He survives thanks to the tango. Around 15 HP was all that's left. We've got a nice stack here going on from Seneco, so he's both winning the lane and stacking up this hard camp for Blizzy to take advantage of as soon as he has that Vanguard. And that really helps uh, any of these Axe players because the Vanguard slows down your blink, but it's necessary for you to have a game later on. So it really helps if a support stacks for you. So you go from that Vanguard immediately into a chunk of net worth that, um, that you can start 
looking at that blink dagger a little bit more closely. Is this kind of where you expected Navi's draft to be at at this stage? Like that they would just lose these lanes, or I think they would. They should lose bottom. I think they should kind. I mean, I guess Troll is supposed to, like, Troll would be really good against Furion, right? Every aspect of that, like in melee form, you have Whirling Axes, you can stay range form and fight him if he yep. tries to right-click you. So I guess it's not too surprising that uh, that, that lane is actually winning um, rather than, than losing at all. See so, yeah. a recap of this gank down bottom. Nice little shackle shot there. And then the mid lane matchup, Storm Spirit versus uh, Pugna, is, is is hard for Storm Spirit. Yeah. But he's and he's doing okay. Like he's behind yeah. nine CS. It's not like there's a massive difference between these two right now. For sure. That's the one lane that's perhaps going the best for them. Lizzie, his woes continue. He's going to get chased down, and that's his second death of the game. Navi's early game being pummeled a bit here. We're going to have to see maybe Storm get active and start rotating early on, particularly around when Drow hits level six, so he gets that bonus damage because. As it stands, uh, things are falling apart a bit here. Looks like that stack is gone, so... Um, I wonder if the axe cleared it before he died. Hopefully, I don't really see a way of Empire doing it super fast. Yeah. Imagine that was him. He hasn't got that great of a net worth. He's just sitting around the 2.2k mark where Wind Ranger is. Yeah. So really struggling as the Wind Ranger has a pretty good time, so far at least. So it's definitely a game that, while Storm Spirit rotates the bottom lane, trying to secure the Draw Rangers uh, lane a bit more, they really need the Axe to come online as fast as possible. His Blink Tagger timing is most key because he's the only playmaker on their team, really. You don't want Storm Spirit to be running around trying to get you kills at, at 15 minutes. That's just not what a Storm Spirit really does. He needs to take a lot of time to farm for himself so he becomes that late game carry. And Drow Ranger, so many times in these games, is just a laning liability and then doesn't really have a whole lot of effectiveness going into 15 minutes. So Axe is your only guy you're going to be able to play around. And given that he's maybe rushing, well, he's going to commit to the Vanguard before the Blink. I mean, if you're talking about Axe coming online, normally that's the Blink Dagger, which could take some time to actually be there. So it may be a little bit longer before he really has that full impact here. They are looking for a kill up top on Ogre, which they'll get. We'll get the troll here. That was a lot of mana and resources being spent to get that kill. And while that's going on, bottom lane, it's like the, the Tier 1 tower was claimed. If Na'Vi can get this top tier one, they'll perhaps feel a little bit better about committing all these heroes up top. They are also, of course, securing some of these bounty runes uh, for their team as well. You know, seeing that the, the Axe didn't actually pick up his Vanguard, what they may have done is rotated the Wyvern up to the top lane and done the Cold Embrace clear of the hard camp stack. Yeah, and yeah. maybe that's why the Drill Ranger died earlier with no, like, I didn't see a, a, a Winter Wyvern on the screen anywhere. So maybe that's why his support wasn't around for that. We'll see. Uh, I'm, I got it on, on screen. I'm going to check it out later. Okay. Shabby mid King jumped on. He's nice and tanky on this Pugna right now. The stat items, the bracers, the treads, everything he's got just make him a lot harder to kill. As Miposhka does deny the tier 1 tops. That's a decent chunk of gold that Navi were perhaps hoping would come their way, being denied at this stage of the game. Makes a big difference for them in their timings. Nice insta bash from Troll as he gets cold. Magnus has a skewer as well, and they'll bring Blizzy down with ease. Navi down 4k gold just 11 minutes into the game. He's got to pick up that, that Vanguard. Oh my goodness. Do you think he should just go for the blink instead? or uh, I mean, naked blink ne never feels good as an axe either. Yeah. It feels terrible. The only reason I guess it's kind of acceptable is because he's got Winter Wyvern to back him up. So he can Cold Embrace if he's really in trouble. He can also Winter's Curse to cover the Axe after his initiation. But I, I'm just looking at these situations where he's getting right-clicked by uh, a troll. And troll is pretty fast attack speed, so he's hitting like six, seven, eight times. And a Vanguard like will increase your HP, your effective HP, by a lot. Yep. Because like with a Vanguard procs at these lower levels, it's pretty much blocking the full amount of damage. Well... They'll continue trying to get their axe farm. They're kind of, they smoked up to sit behind them a little bit, but they quickly went their own ways and didn't really fully commit to a rotation into that top lane. Nature's Prophet does now TP up to get down a ward. 
As, yeah, we will see Empire look to come on in for this one. They've got the Winter's Curse, which is partly why they want to take this fight. But even with Winter's Curse up, they may just have to use it defensively. I don't think they can really fight into Kuman. He's able to chop his way out of the Sprout. The Winter's Curse comes out onto Madio, who Mate. will yeah. be kept alive. Mate, yeah. That's an end. As he's now going to go for a TP out. Is there a bash? No oh. chance for a bash, but he gets the kill. Nicely done. Chappy, Arcane Rune, he's going to go blast some towers now. Feels like Pugna is able to kind of set the tempo and lead the way now with his early game farm. Sorry, I, I literally just missed them clearing this time. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, the Pugna came up here. Chappy rotated up. And they took the hard camp stack. Oh, they so uh, what, it was dire. That's why Blissey is so under farmed. I was like, man, how does he not have Vanguard if they took that stack? Yeah, this, I mean, this Pugna now, it's showing a lot later on with his current farm. I don't think those odds reflective of the current state of this game. Perhaps no. going coming into it, uh, maybe I would have argued Na'Vi the favorite, but with where things stand right now, I imagine Dota Plus is heavily favoring Empire with their draft. I don't do it myself, uh, never have, but what I've heard is that uh, any organization that has a lot of fans, those are always good games to bet on. Right? Because <laughs> you've just got diehard fans who are willing to back their team. Yep. Happens through sports as well, right? For sure. Like yeah, yeah. Arsenal or something. Yeah, you believe in them more than you than the logic, logically should. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'll be skewed by your personal biases. At least a lot of fans, not all. And there'll be some, you know. There, there's a lot of Navi Alliance fans out there who are just being beaten down so much <laughs> by the, the constant failure that yeah. they're just like, I'm never betting. They're probably betting against Navi so that if they lose their money, they feel good because it's like, well, win-win situation, win money or Navi win. You know, I look at that as a more optimistic light in that the Navi fans that were left at a certain point as they went through the darkest periods, that showed to me the inner strength of the human spirit, you know, <laughs> that they could just get dumpstered for so long and still be fans. They, they they weren't bandwagoning. They were there for good. You know, there's those few small moments along the way that make you feel good, like even though your team's still bad. Like when Navi won the BO1 against EG at the uh -huh. ESL tournament and they got to all shit on Blitz because he's like, oh, you know, <laughs> Navi going to get dumpster. And they win a BO1 and then they go on to lose every other game and EG finished like top three. Those moments, you know, that's what those Navi fans live for. <laughs> oh, what an RP. Oh, just Blizzy. I'm not sure how good that is. What a winner's curse. Oh, okay. I'll get him down after the D-Cart wears up. A great, a better Shackle Shot catches out Blizzy with Crystallize. And they're going to likely chase down Crystallize as well. Unless there's some kind of defensive play here. Kuman gets slowed down by the Storm. Needs to go range form for the slow, perhaps. He's still charging forward. Nice play by Maidon. There we go. He finds Crystallize. He jukes back in the trees. Maposhka, he's going to finish him off. Gets that a kill. Now they're looking for more. Kuman's, well, he's going to just start pummeling into Chew. Get up those Fervor Stacks. There's the attack speed, and it's going to be complete destruction by Team Empire here in the top lane. That looks like one of those fights where, because the win the winner's curse was so good that I think if they were on even ground, net worth-wise, then I think that's a fight that Na'Vi can win. But simply because of the fact that Empire is so much stronger, they could have op they could operate without Pugna, still win that fight, in part thanks to Seiyu, super sick shackle shot, and, uh, and Maposhka with that skewer back as well was really well placed, skewered two of them. So, whoops, a bit too much team fight recapping, not enough team fight viewing. As Soniko gets caught out, I believe that was you know, warding mission, maybe. Looks like it was on the enemy side of the map, so not quite where you need to be. Full rod of Atos on Chappie's Pugna, looking for some extra control and way of dealing with this storm spirit. Simultaneously, if you look at the the other side of the coin of, like, if Drill Ranger takes away map control, away from this Troll Magnus, and they're not allowed the camps to let the, the, the Troll Warlord's net worth flourish, the opposite of the side of the coin is, if you just fail your laning phase, you get rolled over real quickly, and Empire has more map control than you, then Troll can farm everything, and so can Pugna. And they're even letting, like, Maposhka's got a good amount of net worth as well, but whereas, like, in the previous matches where we've seen him, he has been very low net worth because he only follows the troll around. Yep. Well, Blizzy will make a small consolation prize 
for Navi as they find a pickup, but it's mid lane where bigger fish are being fried. A great Winter's Curse again! That saves Crystallize initially. He's still being decrept up. Doesn't look like they've got the damage to bring him down. There's an RP. Perhaps coming too late. Chappie decrypts himself, stays alive throughout it. And they do manage to take the team fight mid despite a great Winter's Curse once again coming out. It's a battle of the support. Seiyu and, uh, and Chu are both trying to put in work for their teams, but Seiyu's team is a lot more reliable. And uh, all Chu can really do is just kill one person in the Winner's Curse. The rest of his team can't really follow up as well. Uh, they just seem to be lacking the, the, the damage. Bottom lane, Chu, TP out, makes it barely. So, the status quo continues. Empire dominating the map, farming up absolutely everything. A troll with this much farm this early on, and comparatively, it's just even worse. Gotta imagine Empire feel pretty comfortable about where this game is at. Their ability to take all these out of towers, control the map, take Roshan. Sonico's being annoying, but the problem is this is your nature's prophet who's able to get on the map. You can't actually get anything with your drow, with your storm. And well, Sonico also may feed away his life. Sonico's in like that desperation mode when yeah. you're playing a split pushing support and you're like, all right, I'm going to go back door, tier one towers, which with a draw ranger strat, should have probably already fallen already. And he's queued up a Meteor Hammer. Like, he knows that he's going to have to play a very large part in prolonging this game. He's just going to have to, like, split push crazily, put pressure on towers, force Empire back as much as possible just so they can get the, the Storm Spirit into hopefully a position to carry the game. But again, he should be out carried by Troll Magnus. Yep. Here we go. They smoke up. They're trying to see what they can find here. Oh, they see the courier. Yeah. They go for that one. Too late. Dyer's already finished off Roshan here. They won't be able to contest it. And now, we have an awkward spot as Kuman's going to go charging forward on the Troll Warlord. Gets sprouted up. Actually, doesn't have a Quelling Blade was backpacked for the ages. So, has the one, but no Quelling Blade. He's still just going to go charging forward because why the hell not? Looking for a Winter's Curse is Chu, but realized he was not going to be able to get multiple heroes in as Kuman positioned very well as he went diving forward. He's at near max movement speed when he pops up. Uh Bloodlust, or he has Bloodlust on him and he pops Phase Boots. And then on top of that, you've got Chappie, who's also really fast naturally, has Bloodlust, and he's yeah. got Rod of Atos, so they actually have super good catch in, in a team that just weirdly runs at you. Normally, it's abilities that give you this, like, really good catch mechanism that doesn't allow the enemy to retreat, but Empire just, honestly, they're just so far ahead. Shackle. <laughs> he could have canceled the TP sooner, but he's like, I'm going to line this one up. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, we kill you with ease either way, but this way it looks nicer. He's got to make himself look good. It's like Dota 1 where you can type dash hook accuracy. He's like, I, I work on my shackle accuracy. So there's some stats website out there somewhere that counts latch shackle shots. Kuman got very low here in the mid lane, but he's got the Aegis, so he's not particularly afraid. And Blizzy, uh oh. Um, and Poshka skewers himself onto the high ground. I don't think he needed to go for the full style points there with the cliffing, but you now he's up there. As with any uh, rising Empire player at the end of the day, Seiyu's spot on this roster is just a tryout for a Virtus Pro or a Navi. <laughs> so, you know, he's got to make sure he looks as good as possible. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Love you, Empire! <laughs> That's a depressing way of looking at <laughs> Empire success. <laughs> it's more individual success. <laughs> They are the original, you know, academy or youth team before China was yep. even doing, you know, <laughs> newbie youngs and whatever else. E-home luminouses. There was Team Empire. There was, there was Empire the, Youth. The real Navi academy team. <laughs> or, yeah, I could say more VP academy team so, these days. Some pretty good players you got on that roster there. <laughs> Be seeing if uh, someone poached them away from you. Yep. 8 to 20, 14,000 gold lead on a team that has better late game. There's not a whole lot to say about this game unless Team Empire, like, just throw, trying to go high ground or something like that. And all of a sudden that gives Navi some sort of ground to work with. Because yep. right now all you're going to see is just, like, these desperation split pushes from uh, Furion, hoping a hero isolates itself so they can get an axe, Storm Spirit pick off on somebody. It <laughs> denying no. double damage runes with your life, you know. Sure, why not? Uh, yeah, this is 
you know, we talked about it earlier when the Mega Creep thing happened. You know, there's those games where Castle, like, you know, it feels over pretty early on, then drags, but this may be becoming one of those games. Yeah. That game, I was like, I was actually totally okay with them defending versus the Megas. It felt very winnable. This game feels less winnable than the game against Megas, but. Yeah. And they've only taken a tier three so far. Yeah. It's pretty desperate. Really need that blade mail on uh, the axe. So as he makes these rotations, I know he wants the pickoffs on these heroes, but he's got to find a way to be able to farm neutrals as well because the blade mail is essential for being able to kill this troll. Yeah. Nice. If Intel's they ever can. Dodge. Doesn't get caught by it, but they're still in these trees here. I will they be caught out here, Blizzy. Miposhka, you're not wondering about that. You're not worried about that missing tree. <laughs> you're not gonna go see what. Uh, yeah. He's cool with it. There's no lumber industry in this game. Maybe he doesn't even realize. I feel like yeah, it could be. I, I wouldn't realize that. that. <laughs> oh, oh, Blizzy dodges the call. Kuman nicely microed once again. He's going to look to right click down Blizzy. Doesn't succeed in doing so. Instead, he's beating up his buddy Miposhka, who gets the Yules off. Dodges those last couple right click attacks here. He's still alive. He's being healed up by the live train. Storm couldn't finish him off either. They nicely keep themselves alive. The Winter's Curse now will cool down, which may set them up to go high ground. Great save by uh, by Chappie. I like how Empire is still playing um, like really disciplined in their control of the map. Like They took that tier 3, backed up. They're going to systematically take out the shrines. There's still plenty of gold to pick up on the map. I assume that this is also going to mean they're going to wait until the next Roshan uh, before they go for the first lane of Rax. Scotty is a, is a big upgrade as well on this troll. Sound. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, when they sometimes they show the replay, they they stutter the sound. Yeah, it's like some ever so slight slow mo thing going on. Yeah. Well, things look pretty poor for old Navi here in game number one. He's showing that this troll magnus can do. So Nico, you know, he's trying to throw away his own life for the greater good once more. Gets a tier one tower. But Empire Roxy are only going to get range tracks here. They lost their creep wave and they have to fall back, deal with the split push. All well, you guys are waiting for game number two to start. Since this game's close over, go on over to weplay.tv slash codes and enter that promo code. You can win some good stuff. Just imagine, like, Sineko's taunting while he's taking the tower. And w the reality is, like, you know how, like, Furion, he waves his arm around and does that little dance. He's like, wave, guys, come gank me. <laughs> come kill me, please. Don't kill my base. Yeah. Kill me instead. Stop pushing, please. <sighs> you know what? what can they really hope for on this Navi side? Like Ooh, oh. a blink dagger for Chu. <laughs> like he's yeah. the only one killing people on Navi, so that's use Empire's helpful. farm against them. That's yes. obviously something Wyvern can do better than most. Axe can also do it with the blade mail. Yeah. You know, it's they've got heroes that benefit from troll getting more farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like the, uh, you know, like the infinite scaling strategies where you've got like Legion, Duel, or uh, or Silencer stealing intelligence, stuff like that. This yep. is the anti-infinity stack. <laughs> you just turn damage around on the enemy. You need like Dark Seer. Who else can do it? Uh, TB reflection, I guess. TB, yeah. Yeah, Dark Seer, TB. Ben Avengers her own teammates with the illusion. I don't know. More thing, you don't get their items. You can just turn into their heroes. But. Well, uh, we'll see what they can do. It seems like just split push and cutting waves right now. It's uh, Even this Axe Blade Mill, it's like, okay, theoretically it's a problem, but Troll's even itemized for it. Like, going for this Satanic, having lifesteal against the Axe Blade Mill is a good, like, pseudo way of not getting destroyed by it. Magnus has a Yule Scepter. If you do manage to get Satanic off, you're going to heal up all that damage you inflict on yourself. And he's tanking up two of the Scotty, so yeah. He's not going to die. He's going to be able to just get cold and kill the Axe. But it seems like Empire played safe. They took just the Range Rex mid, likely waiting for that next Roshan. Uh, if anything. Man, I can't believe they're really trying to get a pick off instead of just going for that melee Rax. They are serious about securing this game. Yeah, I think they're just respecting the, the Winter's Curse a lot. This is like. Um, this is a good establishment of discipline early. Whereas, like, uh, Furzy, for example, they certainly had. Uh, games in their hand and 
through their over aggression and such to kind of throw away the leads. They select the opposite. Empire just. It, their slowness is allowing Seneco's split pushing to be more effective, though. Oh, yeah. Right. As you are taking more objectives and you really haven't lost that, like, any sig anything significant yourselves, like, Melee Rax is the first, like, big win. And. Surprised to see that Empire hasn't done that yet. Plissy is still working on the blade mail. Oof. He's yeah, pocketed the ring of health that was supposed to go into the vanguard, has sold the stout shield. I don't even know if it's still worth it necessarily. No. Cer mail. Certainly not, but I don't I don't know. I don't know what's better. Like you go for like something bigger that's like a halberd type item against the troll. I don't. I. I. It, for me, it's. It's more like I don't care how bad the game gets. Like you should have been able to find the farm to get your band guard. Yep. You should have been able to find the farm to get blade mail. By now. This game He's just very... so focused on sitting on the side of the map and trying to get those pickoffs that just aren't occurring because Empire aren't really splitting up. Post gonna find Seniko. And they'll get a kill. Can they find the heroes up top? They're pinging up there. Are they gonna go looking? Looks like they're TPing out. Be. Oh, Chrysalis, he's just hoping for the best up here. I think he's like, I could TP, but I might be able to cut a wave 30 seconds from now if he stays longer. He cuts the next wave. I thought oh. he was doing that. Oh, he's trying to cut the wave that's already there. I think he, he mistimed it slightly. Yeah. I almost feel like uh, cutting the next wave was much safer considering how recently they got a kill there. Yeah, cut the next wave and let your Winter Wyvern go or your Storm Spirit just zip down yeah. the lane and kill that. Yeah, he, he stayed in this, so... In. Seems like that might be the plan. Oh, Couple I, more wave. They got another tier two. Yep. On the side Radiant's of Navi, so scanning Roshan, but do you really contest Roshan? Probably not. Do they have the long range catch here for the Drow, who should Shadow Blade TP out probably here? Which way do you hide? Will Body Empire is guess taking right? Damage right now, you see this? Storm and Fury are inside wow. the base. They oh. just got RP'd though. And Axe is dead from that. Storm is dead from that. It looks like, oh, no, he barely survived. Top lane. I, I mean, we kind of know. Dr I assume Drow is dead. They had detection for her. No Drow. TP'd out. Okay. Shackle shot into focus fire, and she has TP'd on her. So they were in the enemy base, did some damage, got RP'd, I guess. Here we go. We'll, we'll find out. There we go. Perfect answer. Two-man RP. Storm somehow pulled out just in time as we'll go back to the live game where Ogre's been picked off. How was Ogre dead so long? I guess he pulled back in that earlier fight. He's going to buy back again. He says, I don't want to be dead for 70 seconds. That's 70 seconds where I'm not bloodlusting my carries. Roshan's back up more. Especially with Roshan, yeah. yeah. If they if they get this Aegis and they don't march down mid, I, I think like they're being too cautious at that point. Yeah. Like I respect the discipline and everything. I respect that they're they're trying to really try and secure this game, but they really are just giving more time for Storm and, and Furion to do their shenanigans. Storm's trying, but is he going back in? We saw this. It's oh, really easy. <laughs> okay. Storm still has some mana. It's gonna miss time. He's a little bit too late, and he may be able to get chased down now because of how much mana he used up there. He does have the Bloodstone for the quick respawn. Kuman, beyond godlike, this is surely gonna be Rax and probably several lanes. Yeah, Furion's not close enough to the, the base to force anybody back just yet. Storm doesn't clear out the whole way, but with the help of the Winter Wyvern, does a bit more damage. Problem is there's siege creeps here, and those will not get nuked down so easily. Seneco trying to split push, but you kind of ignore that at this point if you're Empire, at least with Kuman pushing as fast as he is. He may TP back one hero soon, but looking to secure this second lane of Rax first. Scythe is the next item. It's kind of an interesting choice, especially with his blink dagger. He's the nice to craft. Yeah, yeah, that's one way of dealing with the axe. So they are on the high ground down bottom. They can prop it. Gonna force this out. Trolls looking for something to life still off here. Has that satanic is gonna get more well, winter's curse next to his teammate. Chappie has the Aeon disc, luckily. That keeps him alive. They are gonna lose the troll Aegis to the ball lightning as the Aetos comes into play. Magical. So we had a ball on out. Not the best RP. Catches out just one, but it's still enough. Prophet is taking a melee rack slowly here. Even if they lose this melee rack, it's not the end, end of the world for Empire, but it probably should be defended. Troll gets gone on. So Storm comes back into the fray here. Buyback from the Winter Wyvern, and it'll be the second full lane, as it does look like they end up defending 
their base just fine against the split push. And Kuman's not done. He wants the Megas. He's going to cheese. He's going to get a Yule Scepter into a Skewer. That takes out Storm. He's dead with that buyback. And that should be it for Na'Vi at this point. Not sure there's much fight left, even with the Storm on a pretty low respawn timer. Pugna proved to be such a, a strong pickup, even though this game is like super one-sided, we didn't actually see that much from Empire. Uh, the this Pugna pick against Wyvern and Axe both are like really hard counter. So that's a great choice. Like the Wither's Curse, you could decrepify the target that's being gone on. You can life drain the hero that's being gone on as well. Axe hates Pugna for multiple reasons, not just the decrepify, but also the fact you're just a sitting duck for life drain. So all around. Um, solid draft from Empire, but also felt like there was a significant amount of play involved. It's just the that top lane going so well for the troll. Yep, that sets okay. like Navi have no ground to be able to work with. Yeah, losing lanes against these like greedy power farming heroes is just like you're gonna lose really badly. Like, yeah. If that's like a you know a TA, a Troll Magnus, a Luna type here, if they have a good start and have like a gold lead out of the lane stage, they're going to accelerate because that means they get that farming item. Um, mm -hmm. In this case, it's just levels for the troll. It's having a mask within power. You know, for Luna, it's like hitting your level 10, getting your max glaive. You're just going to suddenly outfarm your opponents while already being ahead. Yeah. And game quickly gets pretty ugly, which is kind of what happened. Uh, not much more to say. I don't really feel like it was pretty one-sided from the get-go. Yeah, we'll take a break. We didn't get a very long break before. We'll take a bit of a long one, get a quick snack, get some drinks, and be back with game number two, Navi 